one of my biggest fuck it moments in life, uh, in my career, which definitely worked out to be better. Jigmasters, we have been trying for about a good six, seven years to get signed. So since the early 90s when we formed, when we were actually a four-man crew, we were trying to get record deals, you know, Rowdy Records, Island Def Jam. We almost got signed to Profile at one point. Um, Tommy Boy, all, you know, pretty much every label that was based in New York, we shot to, had close calls. But the closest call was East West Records, 1994. We had a demo deal uh, with my man Rick Brown over there that was doing a and at the time. And this was, this was around the time when uh, ODB was getting signed. They had Supernatural on the label. They had uh, Aguilar, formerly known as Adolf the Assassin. You know, it was the, the label was thriving. Das Effects was still alive, which, and actually, that's how I ended up doing the, my first Do the Das Effects remix, one of my first remixes for Microphone Master. So we cut some songs. We had like a four song demo and everything was looking lovely. We had a single ready to go. We were meeting with the marketing team. Everything looked like it was, you know, on the up and up. And the next thing you know, Merge. East West, Electra merged. Um, they became the ERG group. And every, almost everybody in the East West department left or got fired. So that meant Big Brown was still there, but everybody who was handling our project got fired. We were just like, damn, you know? And then one of one of the guys, at that point in time, we were a three-man group. The third member left, because he was just like, this is bullshit. You know, I'm gonna go off and do solo. So it was left with me and Krim. And it's funny, me and Krim, it started with me and Krim, then we added two more of our peoples, our boys, and then they left and it ended up being the two of us again. And at that point in time, we were just like, man, it's time to go just do this independently. You know, this was like, around Wu-Tang era, you know? Protect your neck and all that. Like they were selling a lot of records and that was the beginning of it. Like Fat Beats was a little store in New York City and you know, the, the independent hip hop scene was starting to thrive. So we were like, man, we, we should just press some records up. And that's how Beyond Real was born. Like that's when um, I formed the, formed the production company, Beyond Real Productions. Me and Krim formed the Beyond Real Recordings label. We pressed up Beyond Rio, it's the first single, and you know, next thing you know, we're like shipping 10,000 units overseas between like Japan and the UK, which was like like our you know some of our biggest fan base. We realized at that point that you know we could actually make some money and just be an autonomous fixture in the in the world of hip hop, just doing it independently and hiring the right promoters. Um, I had my man G-Man, rest in peace, doing some of the mail out and Dwight Willisey, who's formerly, who's now with uh, Atlantic Records. He's been with Atlantic for a long time, but I went to school with him. So we, we kind of pulled together and used all of our resources to get the records out. And for the next four or five years, you know, Beyond Real, we were pumping out a lot of different artists. Um, Scam and Shadow Man was one of our groups. We had uh, a track with them released and one of the first appearances with Eminem on the label. Channel Live, we released a record with them. Uh, Basement Chemist, a group out of Kansas City. Shout out to my brother, Jack Max. Um, you know, so we just became this independent thing. And then by the early 2000s, it was, the whole independent hip hop scene got saturated. It was like everybody and their mother had, uh, you know, a home recording studio and was putting out records and it became less about, you know, quality and more about quantity and, you know, whatever the case may be, that was a whole different era. But, you know, this is also raucous era, you know, Potty Rhythmatics, raucous, most deaf, all of that. Like, you know, I was I was involved with both scenes, but it was a good it was a good period. That was a good period. But that East West thing, man, that was almost enough to break us, but we had to keep it moving at that point.